Hi everyone, this is Tuplex, and welcome to Factorio 1.0. The game's finally released after years of development work by Woob, and uh, the game is awesome. Congratulations to those guys for getting out of early access with the official release. I'm really looking forward to playing it. I haven't played for a while. Um, I've been playing a lot of Oxygen Not Included lately, so I think I'm probably going to be a little rusty with the controls, but we'll see how it goes. Um, with the new release, I'm expecting that we're going to see a lot of new players. So this series is going to be geared for, for newer players to the game. If you've never played before, then welcome. Hope you enjoy it. Let's start a new game. Single player, new game. Uh, we're going to go to the free play. And I'm going to do something that I don't think I've ever done before. I'm going to play with default settings, including cliffs. I usually turn cliffs off, but I'm going to go 100% default this time, build up to a fairly large base, maybe a thousand science a minute, something like that. Um, <clears throat> because uh, if, if this is your first time playing the game, then I suggest that you do start with default settings. So we're going into the preview mode uh, where you can kind of see uh, what the map looks like. You can regenerate it a few times till you get something to your liking. What I'm looking for here is, uh, I'm and, and here towards the center is where you're gonna start. So you'll always have water close by. You'll always have coal and iron and stone. I'm gonna look for something, um, oh, and copper. And I'm going to look for something that doesn't have cliffs running right in, right through my resource patches. This looks pretty good. Because all the resources are close to each other and we have a lot of room to work with before we start running into cliffs. Later in the game we can blow up the cliffs if they're getting in the way of our build. But until then, uh, they can help with defense and... Uh, we also have this kind of a narrow peninsula here, which we can wall off pretty easily to protect our base from the south, from from aliens. Uh, there's a, another one over here that we could wall off here to prevent anything coming in from the west. So I think this one looks pretty good. Let's go. All right, so we've crashed and we need to build a rocket and get into space. Before we do that, um, there are some things that we can collect from the wreckage here. So some of these, some of these items are stored. So if you control, if you control right click on them, you'll automatically take out whatever's inside, you know, or you can click it and pull it out of the storage slot. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all we get. Um, and then you can always right click on them and pick it up. Well, you don't really pick it up. You just, you just get rid of it. So, uh, if this stuff gets in the way at some point, we can get rid of it. Okay. So over here is where our starting resource patches are. So we've got coal, iron, copper, and stone. We're going to need all of those. Um, to begin with, we need some type of fuel so that I can start making iron plates. And since there are no trees nearby, I'm just going to right click and mine a few pieces of coal to get things kicked off. Um, and I'm going to press M to open the map. And there you can see exactly how big your patches are. These are not very big, to be honest. Um, fortunately we have a lot more iron just to the north of us, which is going to be great because in the early stages of the game, iron is really what we're going to need the most. So I'll put down my burner drill right there. I'll put down my stone furnace and then I'll take my coal. And, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hover over the drill and press the Z key. Normally the Z key will drop one of whatever you're holding. You can press, whoops, sorry. There we go. You can press F to pick it up 
off the ground. Um, and I'm going to put this on my hotkey as well to begin with because I'm going to be using this a lot. So this way I can press 1 and I'll pick up the coal in my hand. And then I'll just hover over building. I'll press Z a few times. And that'll load it up with coal. And then I'm going to toggle alt mode by pressing this alt button that allows me to see what's inside the building, which in this case is iron plate, which is perfect. Um, and now we need more stone so that I can make more furnaces and more of those mining drills. Um, and again, I picked a nice clear area, but there are no big rocks that I can quickly pick up. So it looks like I'm going to have to mine stone by hand to begin with. Um, some starting areas will have a lot of boulders around and those are very convenient because you can fairly quickly pick up a boulder and you'll get 20 to 25 pieces of stone and some of them will even have coal inside it too. In my particular case, I do not have such luxuries, so I'm going to have to do things the slow way. Okay. And then uh, once we get a few extra plates, I can make another couple of minor drills. Those use stone as an ingredient, so I just lost the stone that I picked up. But here's some of those boulders I was talking about. So I'll come in my knees instead. All right, so there's 19. 22. So this is this is by far the quickest way to get some stone at the beginning of the game is just look for these boulders. But if there aren't any close by, you can go to the stone patch and pick it up manually. And we'll grab a few trees while we're here as well. So we have some wood. We'll need that for power poles and fuel. Um, you can also use wood as fuel. Um, so if you don't, if your coal's not close by to begin with, you can you can always just chop some trees and use the wood instead of the coal. But the wood the wood does burn faster. Uh, it doesn't have as much energy as coal does. So you'll run through wood faster, and then you'll get this condition you see over here where there's no fuel. All right, so I'm going to feed it some wood to keep things rolling. Okay, now I have two mining drills. So what I'm going to do to get a nice supply of coal is I'm going to put one down there, and then I'm going to take the other one, and I'm going to rotate it, and I'm going to put it down there so that one is facing into the other. And what will happen here if I right click here, I'll give it a single piece of fuel. It'll start to mine coal. That coal will go out and feed this one so that this one starts. And then, so these two will feed each other with coal. Um, but they mine the coal much faster than they burn it. So the coal accumulates in there. And then you can just control left click and pick coal up for, from them. So that makes it real easy. Okay, now let's, uh, I'm going to shift left click stone furnace and that'll make as many as I possibly can with the amount of stone that I have. Uh, let's see, that's five, so let's try to get six of these set up as a good starting point. If you hover over a building and press Q, if you have one of those, one of the same type of building in your inventory, it'll you'll automatically put it in your hand so you can place it. Grab some more coal. And again, I'm just pressing the Z key. And then you can press Q to get rid of whatever you have in your hand. Okay, and I'm just going to keep making more of these mining drills until we have all six of these iron furnaces going. Like I said, we need a lot of iron plates. Um, and in fact, I'm going to take these two and um, expand my coal 
So I just put them in a circle like that. And again, they all just feed one another. And this way we'll get coal faster. Right click and drag to pick up my iron plates. So pretty simple. Oh, there we go. Um, the, the, the mining drills burn fuel twice as fast as the furnaces do. Uh, so if you don't mind doing a little bit of counting as you're fueling these things, put in twice as many into the drills as you do into the furnaces. There, something like that. It doesn't have to be precise. Okay. Um, so I've got two more drills. I'm going to craft a wooden chest. And I'm going to go over here to this stone patch. And I'm going to start automatically mining some stone. Because we're going to need a lot of stone to make these furnaces. So I'm going to arrange these two drills so that they're both pointing at the same tile. I'll put a chest right there. Now this time, I'm going to control right click. That'll put in half the coal. And then control left click. That'll put in all the rest of the coal. And that way I give them equal amounts. And I'm going to give them a lot because I'm only going to come visit this place every once in a while to grab whatever stone has accumulated. And feel free to turn all your stone into furnaces right away. Um, It'll be a while before we need the stone for anything else besides furnaces. Alright, and just keep these things fed so you can keep making iron plates. And then I'm going to make two more. And we're going to start making copper plates as well. So, so this is, you know... This is basically what we want to do at the very beginning of the game. We just want to make iron plates, lots of iron plates, some copper plates. We want to mine stone. We want to mine coal. And that'll get us started. All right, so we'll pick up more stone, and then I'll come back and pick up a few copper plates. And then we can start to set up some basic power generation so that we don't have to be constantly feeding things manually with coal. Okay, and you know what? I'm gonna make four more of these burner drills. And I'm gonna double this. There, so now I have eight drills making coal for me. That should give me lots and lots of it. All right, and when you have a lot of coal, you can just hold down the Z key and just do this. <laughs> Quick and easy. Okay, let's grab some more copper plates. Give them some more coal. Okay. So now, um, what I want to do is I want to start doing some research. Okay, so you press T, that'll open your research window. Um, you can also get to it from up here, I believe. Oh, no, you can't. Press T. Okay, yes, press T. <laughs> the first one we want to research is automation, because that'll give us an assembly machine, which we can use to make other things automatically. Um, I always start with automation. Uh, if you're playing on a death world, you might want to start with turrets and military, but in almost every case, I start with automation. That takes 10 science packs and a lab. Okay, so we'll say start research. Um, I'm going to craft one lab. You can see that has a lot of ingredients, so that takes a little while to craft everything by hand. Um, and this requires electricity as well. 
so I'm going to make one boiler and I'm going to make two steam engines. I'm going to make one offshore pump because we need water for the boiler. And I'm going to make one pipe to ground. And then I'll make a handful of electric poles. So I'm just going to right click on this. When you right click on it, it'll make five at a time. So I'll just right click on that three times. That'll make 15 power poles. And if you don't have enough wood or something to make 15 power poles, just go chop down a few trees or make fewer power poles. You really only need one if you put everything right next to the boilers, but uh, having more power poles will allow me to string things out a little bit farther. Okay, and then I always put power poles in my hotbar as well. So that's in the eight position. I can shift, if I press shift four, it'll pick up, no, sorry. Like I said, I'm a little rusty with my controls. Um, is it eight? Control four? Jeez. I'm bad. Anyway, I'll just click on it. I know these I can get to with one, two, three, four, five. This is embarrassing. Uh, shortcut one, two, three, six, seven. Yeah, did I push? That's six, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it's nine. Okay. There we go. Whoops. Sorry. My bad. Okay. So we need water and we have water up here. Actually, ignore that water. I have a big lake to the south of these patches and that's a lot closer to where all my business is, is happening. So, um, I think I might put my power down here. But I'm thinking ahead at the same time, and at some point my power generation is going to take up, you know, a pretty significant amount of space. You know, it might take up a region like that big, let's say. And I have these cliffs in the way. So let's build it. I'm going to build it just to the right of my stone patch here right down here that should give me room to expand all right so i take my offshore pump i'm going to place that right there i'll get a pipe to ground and do that that way i don't have it right next to the water and that'll give me some room to belt in some coal i'm going to place one boiler now be careful with the boiler um, this water icon shows where the water has to go, and this shows where the steam goes, where the steam comes out. So make sure you attach it to your pipe where the water goes and not where the steam goes, otherwise it won't work. And then I'm going to connect two steam engines. Okay, and you can see that the water pumps automatically. This type of pump doesn't require any power. Okay, and then I'm going to place a power pole. The power pole has a green field around it, which shows you what buildings are going to be fed power from it. You have to make sure that both of your steam engines are within that field. So I'm going to place a power pole uh, right here on the bottom corner of my second uh, steam engine. And I'm going to place, well, later on I'll place another one here to power some inserters, but we don't need that right now. Okay, and then I'll take the second one out as far as it'll go and still stay connected, which is right there. Okay, and then I'll just continue stringing those up like that. Now to string along multiple power poles, you can either place them manually, or um, if you go to where your previous pole is, you hold down your left mouse button you can run with it and it'll automatically place the next pole at the maximum distance. Okay, so I'm gonna run a few there and then I'm gonna come over here. Uh, let's go up a bit. 
I try to make my power lines always at right angles. It's it's not required by any means, but I just do that because I like things to be neat and orderly. Okay, I've been neglecting my smelters. I've got a lot of coal now. So now that I have a lot of coal, I'm just gonna control. Um, coal comes in stacks of 50, right? So if I pick up my, my coal, and I click on the building, it'll open it. If I pick up my coal and I control left click, it'll load one stack. If I control right click, it'll load half a stack. Or I can hold down the Z key and do this a whole bunch. Okay. So now I'm gonna put down my lab. And it has no power because I didn't put any fuel into the furnace yet. We'll take care of that in just a moment. Let's feed these. I'll just give them half a stack each. We'll grab the stone. And then I'm going to craft one... Mm, let's make a regular inserter. I'm going to make one... Well, I'll show you burner inserters. I'll make one burner inserter. And I'll make another wooden chest. Burner inserters do not require electricity to run. So I'll put it right there next to the boiler. I'll put the chest right next to that. And then I'll just throw in two stacks of coal. And I do that just by control left clicking. It'll move one stack at a time. Or I'm sorry, shift left clicking. If you control click, it'll move everything. But I'm just gonna shift click because I don't wanna give it all. Um, and as long as the burner inserter has access to fuel, it'll feed itself with the same fuel to keep it running. Okay, so now I have power. Um, these boilers are not running yet because we're not using any electricity. So now I'm going to craft 10 of these science packs. So I'm just going to right click it twice. That'll make 10. These take 5 seconds each to make. Right, So you can see why you don't want to run through the game just crafting everything by hand. You definitely want to set up automation. Now what I did there is I control right clicked and just dragged the coal across it and then put a half a stack and everything. Okay, then we open up the lab. I'll shift click and that'll load in my science pack. And then we can see our research progressing. Right, if you click on the power pole, we can see that we're consuming 60 kilowatts. We have a maximum capacity of 1.9 megawatts with the two steam engines that we've built. Let's put in the rest of those science packs. And if we roll over here, we can see that our boiler is boiling and the engines are engining. You can see that they're making a little bit of steam. They're just making a little bit of steam coming out because they're not working very hard right now. But we built up some extra capacity so that we don't have to be constantly expanding it every time we build another building. Okay, and this will be done very quickly. While we're waiting for this, I'm gonna to go to the combat tab and I'm gonna build a radar and I'm also going to build light armor. Craft one of those. I'm going to wear that. That'll give me some protection from aliens. And you can see that you automatically equip it if you don't already have armor equipped. All right, now the radar I am uh, holding in my hand. And you can see up here in the mini map, you can see there's a big uh, blue square. That blue square shows what you'll be able to see on the mini-map depending on where you place your radar. Right now, if I go to the mini-map, you'll see that there's a light area where I can see exactly everything that's happening in real time. The rest of the map, I can't see any detail. I can only see that there are some patches. Right. If I move over this way a little bit, 
now this area has moved because I have moved. So this is my real-time viewing radius. But you can see now that these, these sections over here, I can no longer see the details, right? So placing a radar improves your, your, your line of sight, let's say, or it removes fog of war over a much larger area, right? So now I've got all this area that I can see very clearly from the map view. And typically I'll cover my whole map, my entire map, my entire base with enough radars that I can see that way. Um, at the same time, the radar will start scanning these other sections that are completely black that I have zero visibility of. So, so we set up a radar early because that way we can see where enemies may be coming from in the future. Um, see that just exposed this, um, this grid cell that's, it's called a chunk in the parlance of the game. And then it'll expose this one next. So it's very slow when it initially, when it scans it, you can, you can see the details of it briefly. Uh, and then it'll fade out, right? So anything outside of this highly visible area, it's just being scanned at a very slow rate just to uh, remove this blackness. So you can see, you know, you can kind of see what was there the last time it got scanned, but you won't see any detail after a few moments. But this way we'll start re revealing other portions of the map so we can see where resource patches and enemies are. Okay, so automation is finished. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to build two assembly machines. And I'm gonna build one, two, three, uh, uh, let's just make five inserters. And this way we'll be able to automate the production of additional science packs, which as we've already seen, are normally made very slowly. Okay, so I'm gonna place one of these assembly machines right next to my lab with one space in between. And then the other assembly machine, I'm gonna move away uh, by one tile and then I'm going to move to the side by two tiles. And you'll see why I do that in just a moment. So let's pick our next research. For the next research, I would like to do logistics. Okay, that'll give us underground belts and splitters, which come in handy. Um, military would be another good choice for your second research. That'll give you a more powerful... Um, submachine gun or shotgun um, and turrets are also very nice to have those are stationary guns that you can place strategically around your base to kill enemies when they come close um, I would say pick one of those three for your next choice if you're new to the game as many of you may be um, military might be a good choice so why don't we do military so we'll click Start Research. It won't start right away because we don't have any science packs. We need to feed science packs into the lab. So this machine we will assign to make automation science packs. To get from this building into the lab, we need an inserter. First of all, I'm going to put those on my, um, on my hot bar. Okay, so we'll place that inserter there. That way, whenever one is done crafting here, it'll automatically get put into the laboratory. Now, um, these science packs require a copper plate and an iron gear wheel. Iron gear wheels require iron plates. So we need to make the gears automatically too. That's what this machine is for. Iron gear wheels that takes an iron plate. And I arranged them like this because we can craft a box wooden chest and I can put it right here I'm gonna put one inserter from the box into the science pack machine and I'm gonna put one from the box into the gear machine and then one from the gear machine into the science pack machine 
Okay. And then I will place a power pole right there and that'll power up all this stuff. So the reason I arranged it this way, um, this needs gears, which are going to come from here. This needs iron plate, which is going to come from the box. Okay. So if I put two stacks of iron plate in the box, each gear wheel takes two iron plates and it'll start to make gear wheels and it'll add them in here. Okay. Now the only other thing I'm missing are copper plates and each science pack needs one copper plate. So each science pack needs one copper plate and one gear wheel. So that means that for every one copper plate and two iron plates, I will get one science pack. Since I put in two stacks of iron plates, I'm going to put in one stack of copper plate. And the inserters are smart enough to know what goes in what machine. And now we are producing automation science packs automatically. They go into the lab and we get research progress. So every once in a while, we just need to come over here, load some iron and copper plates in a two to one ratio. And, and you don't have to do it in a two to one ratio. I do it that way because I don't end up accumulating one or the other. They run out at the same time this way. Um, but if you just want to throw in a few stacks of each and not worry about it, that's totally fine too. It'll still work. It's just that at one point you'll run out of one and you'll still have more of the other. All right. So now our science is automated. Congratulations. You've completed the first objective of Factorio, which is to automate everything you possibly can. Um, I think we might want more copper plates at this point. So we'll want to set up a few more of these. I think just two more will be fine. Just for a little while until we can automate you guessed it, we're going to automate the production of plates. Right? We're not going to be doing the, we're not going to be feeding this stuff coal forever. Nor are we going to be feeding the boilers coal manually forever. Eventually we'll be mining automatically, we'll belt it down here. It'll get loaded in automatically and life will be fun and simple. I'll just give this a few more stacks so that it doesn't run out. Let's check our power consumption. So now we can see that we've got several other consumers of electricity. So now we're using 367 kilowatts instead of uh, whatever 60, I think it was before. Okay, but we still have plenty of headroom. Okay, now the next thing that we can do after fueling those guys. Um, I'm going to make a couple more of these automation machines, these assembly machines. And I'm just going to put them right here. Right, so you notice that when I craft something that requires electronic circuits and gears, for example, I have to make the electronic circuits and gears first and then I make the thing that I actually want. Right? The electronic circuits take iron plates and a bunch of copper cables. And the gear wheels we already know take iron plates. So one of the things I like to do early in the game is set up a machine making gears and set up a machine making copper cables. And that way I can just control click to feed in a stack, control click feed in a stack. And then I just let them whir away and they'll make a bunch of gears and copper wires. And that way when I have them in my inventory, when I need to handcraft one of these more advanced items, it'll go much quicker because a lot of these subcomponents are already made. Okay, military's finished. So let's make a submachine gun. See, see how I'm making gears? Let's control click on those. Now, if I were to make another one, it would just immediately start crafting because I've already got the gears. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pistol. 
I'm going to come over to the lake and I'm going to press the Z key. Oh, it won't let me drop it in the water. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just getting rid of my pistol. We're never going to use it. Um, and this reminds me another another thing we might want to start making is ammunition. So let's make another a third assembly machine. Let's set that to make firearm magazines. And again, we'll just feed it a stack of iron, and it'll slowly start to craft those and every once in a while we can run by and pick it up and reload it and that way we've got some of the basics automatically being made as well okay then we can pick our next research let's go with logistics this time and then that'll start up now if we take a look at this we can see i've got two science packs loaded already and I've got four in the machine, and it's not making any more because it's full. It won't make any more until one more comes out. Maybe two more. Um, and that's because we're currently making these science packs faster than the labs are consuming them. So what we can do is we can make a second lab. And now it's going a little bit quicker because I've already got gears and circuits. All right, and I'll put the second lab right there. I'll give it some more power. And then I'll take another inserter and I'll go from lab one to lab two. And now we can run two labs at the same time. That'll make the research go twice as fast. Okay, so let's feed these iron and iron. That one gets copper. Okay. And here we're off to a good start. And I think that's going to do it for this episode. So um, in the next episode, we will continue automating and building up our factory. We might start doing a little bit of base planning so that we can decide how we want to lay things out uh, so that we can prepare the base in a you know, at least in a somewhat organized fashion so that we don't end up with space constraints later on when we try to expand. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.